for times like this of the world. Let us be a light on a mountain, God, that draws us like a moth to a flame because of your word, of what you said. We are blessed coming into the city. We are blessed going out of the city. I am blessed. You are the apple of God's eye. He speaks that every day. He says, they are the sons of my daughter. He speaks your name when he says it. He says, oh, Lord, yes, Lord. Thank you. Do you hear him saying that? He says, you are the apple of my eye. Each and every one of you today. He is constantly saying that. I have redeemed you. You are mine. Yes. 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 I have given you restoration. I have redeemed you. I have called you out. Yes. Into the highways and the byways. To lay hands on the broken. Because of my son's name. They will be healed. Yes God. There is only one way. There's only one way, and that's through Jesus. Yeah. And that's why he says, love him with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your spirit, soul. all of everything inside yeah. of you, heart and soul. Yeah. Yes, God, heart and soul. Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He holds the power and fighting our battle. and every knee will bow. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You're anointing, God. Amen. Meshach and Meshach and Abednego, they walk. You threw them into the fire, God. We're walking into the fire today. Amen. We're walking into the fire, God, because there things that not of you, God, will burn them out of us today, God. Things not of you, God, take it from us, God. Amen. Let the fiery furnace burn inside of us, God. Amen. A supernatural, God, nothing of this world, God. Supernatural, God. We're supernatural, God, created in the image of the Father. Amen. Yes, and I declare and decree that that's the truth. Every day and every moment of every hour of every... Yes, God, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And it's the goodness of God that we are here today. The praise and the goodness of God. Yes, yes Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never failed me in all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake till I lay my head. I will sing the goodness of God. All my life. 
changing the atmosphere. Yes. You're changing your sons and daughters. You're bringing more, more light yes. into the darkness. More of your light into the darkness. More of your healing power. Yes. Today you're anointed to go out and lay hands on people. Amen. God's anointed you today with power and love. Agape kind of love. The kind of love that holds no kind of grudge. The kind of love that the world knows nothing of. The super kind of natural love that God is amazing. The goodness and the glory of God. So today, God, we thank you that we can come before you and proclaim and declare that you are the king of kings and you are everything that comes of good. Yes, Lord. And let us see more of you and be a reflection of Jesus. And let him come into our hearts, Lord. And today, we will love Jesus more amen. like you have asked. And everybody says amen. 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 Praise God. Man, God does the work on you. Uh, the class? I'll get it. Hey, I'll tell you what, we're just so glad to have uh, Brother Jerry and Wilma with us today. And uh, uh, precious people of God, they just sown their lives into reaching people for Christ. And. Um, God sent them to Cambodia, and uh, where they uh, spent many years. How many years have you guys been there now? In, in January, 
It will be 20 years. Count yeah, 20, 20 years. years. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brother Jerry and I were, were friends before he even knew the Lord was going to send him to Cambodia. That's her baby. I remember. I remember when the call of God was on his life to do mission missions work. I mean, he he knew the Lord was sending him. He just didn't know where. And uh, it's it sure been profitable. Where the Cambodia, okay. where just thousands of different home churches have opened up to them. They, of course, they've, they've labored, they've sown seed, you know, they've, they've spent their lives to, to reach people for Christ, to raise up home churches groups and, and uh, nationals that teach and minister the Word of God. I don't know just how many ministries are under their care and oversight, but uh, he'll be sharing more about that. And, and I just uh, just welcome them also to just release the word of the Lord. Maybe there's a word for the church for believers today to encourage us, to uh, challenge us. You know, each of us have a mission field wherever we go. Amen. Wherever we go. Um, you, you are the light of the world, Jesus Amen. said. And I don't care if it's your next door neighbor. You know, uh, today, uh, as never before, I have felt the need to just share the word of God right here. I mean, sometimes people, you know, God sends you to other nations. But my heart is really breaking for America right now. Amen. I see how lost our country is. Yes. Amen. And uh, how, how badly the United States needs to be evangelized. Amen. And uh, and I think Dennis really get it going? really hit on it. Um, um, give me that that one. That one turns it on. Uh, no, no, it doesn't turn that on. It's this one. Have to label I, I tell you what, so many of those little things, they look alike. Uh, <laughs> all buttons look alike. <laughs> I know it. Everything's getting so sophisticated, it takes a degree to learn how to use it. You know? Use the, use the supposed, button. They tell me it's supposed to simplify things, but the simpler it gets, the more difficult it is for me to comprehend it. I don't know why that is. But you know... Bad confession. Uh, it's okay. God has it well, under control. I, I don't know. We tried to. Uh, we tried to get. We're not much of a tech out. place around here. We're <laughs> pretty. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Call Aaron. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that. We're just thinking. Yeah. Maybe she'll start something sometime. Well, I got plugged like. into your. I got plugged into here. That's all right, honey. Hold on your. Maybe is is there? I use your wire, so. I'm, I'm instead of your system, I'm going through here. Anyway. Okay. Um, well, can we, can we plug that directly into the back of the TV? <laughs> no. Is it just HDMI? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, can we just turn that on? Oh, you know about the HDMI? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I have a new phone, but thank God I got the old one because when you put a new app in, all your information. Uh, kind of reminds you of some of the stuff going on the blue So right. now I'm changing the issue of how do I transfer well, what I what when is it coming in? You know, I buy some old dollars. And you have a CD in there. Well, we're gonna okay. put in for you. Oh, so I see. Little, oh, like that thing. They give the you USB. What do you call it? At least yeah. with the Apple phones, I can only tell you Apple phones. Well, thank you for that. Well, now I know. It's okay. It is an Apple phone. 
if it's in that phone, phone Apple, that you just take the, 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 the SIM card out and, and it has all your, it's that little plastic thing. Correct. In the back? That's what has all your information. Well, thank you for that. Then you just put it in there. And even if you go to the store or mm -hmm. some technical place, yeah. they'll be able to help you with it. Yeah. Thank you for telling me. You should come on and say it's on. Did you put some else in there? Did you put some in there? I know that. I don't know. Okay. I thought you did. She might as well. As far as I'm concerned. Some stuff I know. There's a lot I don't know. I've got some stuff not working on my on my computer right now that I need my son to come over. Oh, that sounds like I was at a point where it's like, okay, my some for some reason my my printer is not. It'll it'll scan, but it won't scan to my computer, which it was doing just fine. So. Yeah, that's what would be like, uh, you're going to this player, or you're going to go to Sometimes, uh, put number HDMI, it's going to be higher, you've got to go 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 higher, old days, old school, so where is this view going now? And ever since we changed the router, well, the there has, has oh, there hasn't been a signal better than ours. Because I have that. So whatever feeds into the TV, it's kind of cheating in the house. Oh, no. yeah. 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 Want to see yeah. another song? Yeah. 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 So I have to yeah. 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 You never know. You never know. Jesus, share my tea. <laughs> I got an echo. <laughs> You want to help here? You need to be on another HML channel. No, it's not perfect. HML. So the HML channel. Oh, my. Which are you going to put in the one? Yeah, yeah, it's over. For a barbecue. Uh, or, you're not HDMI, actually, yeah. you're on yeah. the yeah. 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 Anybody yeah. like another yeah. cup of coffee? <laughs> 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 to wake up and yeah. listen yeah. to yeah. Kim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We have plenty of coffee, okay. there's soda, water. That's a switch box. Yeah. And, I think I'm going to uh, switch to soda our now. Sweet friends <laughs> brought some <laughs> sweets <laughs> back there. The good thing is, we <laughs> all have caffeine. <laughs> you know, I. You've got red to red and white to white, too, by the way. As I was, I will just go ahead and share a little bit here. So I, I just want to kind of reiterate what Dennis was sharing yeah. earlier about. The power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Plan B. This this is the uh, the time in which we really need to uh, release. That's 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 the uh, I think the word for the hour is release the presence of the Lord. I don't know why, but I always am getting tapped. I gotta touch their bands. Oh, I don't feel like they're bands. It's like touch. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words. She's been called everything. And we have many, many, many pictures, so we probably got millions and millions of words. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, so we'll go to our old, old school. Yeah. So we're going to do old school today. Okay. <laughs> and uh, oh woman and I, we've been in Cambodia now nearly 20 years now. And the fruit has been good, just like the Lord said 22 years ago, that you'll have much fruit. Yes. And we have had much fruit. Yes. And we've seen many people come to Christ. In fact, we're calculating nearly 400,000 people have come to Christ. Wow. wow. And our goal when we first went was fine, to sure? make disciples, not converts, but disciples. <laughs> and then 
teaching other people to make disciples. Mm -hmm. So our pastors now, they were a disciple at one time. Now they're a pastor. Amen. And they are making, their church members are becoming disciples, which they will become pastors. Mm -hmm. And you see the progression mm -hmm. that God had planned for yes. the working of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And it's definitely the power of the Holy Spirit. And if it wouldn't be for the Holy Spirit, we would not be in Cambodia. Yeah. That's right. It w we would not be there. Amen. And the Holy Spirit spoke to us, both of us, audibly, that we need to go and to reap the harvest because the harvest was ready. Wow. And so we went, and so now we've been, we have, uh, right now, currently, we've got some COVID in Cambodia too, but we have, in February and March, we had 400 pastors that were active. 400 pastors that are active because we got reports from all uh, of the 400 out of nearly 500 that we have. No, because of COVID, you know, we're, we're, we're down about 100 pastors that have had to retreat and they're not, uh, they're, they're serving the Lord, but they're not, they're not in the capacity of being able to produce fruit, so. Yeah. And temporary. So, temporary. yeah, they're temporary, yeah. And so uh, the purpose of going to Cambodia, of course, was to make disciples and in turn make other disciples to lead other people to Christ. And we started out with me and one, we have, we have a picture someplace. And we, uh, we went out just two by two started just him and I with no congregation, no pastors, nobody, nobody. It was just him and I and Wilma and the Lord. And the Lord. The dream, the dream team. <laughs> yeah. The dream team. Father, and, we Son, went, Holy Spirit. and we went there and the Lord, he told us that the fruit was ready and ripe, ready to be harvested. And it that played out in all of what we've seen so far. And uh, we started 20 years ago, and uh, the the amount of people coming in is just as heavy now as it was 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. But Hallelujah. we have yeah. many more people out there too now. Amen. There now we're in 16 different provinces, 16 out of 21. There's 21 provinces, and we're now in 16 wow. provinces. So we're we're just thanking God. We're just thanking God for what He's done. And what he's still doing. And people ask him, well, when are you going to retire? I said, well, <laughs> you don't get do you see retirement in the Bible anymore? No. no. <laughs> it's not there. No. Uh, we see a plenty of refirement, don't we? Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Refirement. <laughs> and That's basically, we, we got refired and we went there. And uh, God. so we're, we're happy. You come up with me. And we're excited, we're excited to, uh, the, we just give praise and glory to God. And mm -hmm. all we can do is thank you, Lord, for continue opening up doors, yes. continue to bringing people into, into, uh, uh, to be able to help to expand the kingdom of God in Cambodia. And uh, we're just so excited about how the Holy Spirit's really working. And one of the things that we teach, and we went there to multiply, yeah, not add, yeah, <laughs> multiply, <laughs> multiply. Yeah. It's it's two times two, not one and one. That's right. <laughs> and so we came there to multiply, and to have it multiply, we had to be we have to be led by the Holy Spirit Amen. to do that because. God knows everybody. God knows everybody that needs to be saved. And he knows everybody who is receptive and ready to hear the gospel. And so we're just uh, thank you. Yeah, you know, I wish we would have had the videos. We would have taken you on a little trip to Cambodia with us. And uh, 
We are still as excited, if not more excited, than on the day that we left for Cambodia. Mm. Oh, and, that's uh, great. You know, Jerry had been going to India for 10 years and five wow. years to Guatemala before this time. Whoa. But then when India closed, when that closed, um, they came, They tried to kill him several times. Oh my Jesus. So that was it. Um, we really? no longer could go out. And so then God called us there. Mm. But uh, I want to share, can I just, I'm oh, hiding my phone went off that thing. Why did I get it? <laughs> Sorry. That's my, the, sorry, the phone went off. That's my time to exercise. <laughs> so, anyway, exercise for the Lord up here. And, uh, um, yeah, when, when we were in our 50s, God called us there. And it was really a remarkable calling. All callings are remarkable. Okay? Amen. Especially when you obey the call. That's, yeah. if there's not one more. But we'd like to kind of share ours a little bit. Um, do you want to talk about yours, too? What? You're calling. Oh, uh, the calling. You walk in the rice field. Oh, the rice field. Yeah, uh, I, you know, like I said, we, I was working in India for 10 years. For two months every year, I'd go to, to India and work with a guy, Sam Salvaraj in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. And uh, we worked with him, and we did church planting there. And then the doors closed and they started killing Christians. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't, we couldn't, as a foreigner, go into the foreign field and into the, into the uh, 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 villages. You could be in the towns, but not in the villages. Mm -hmm. And so, anyway, the door was closed. Mm -hmm. And uh, the opportunity for, to go to Cambodia, Cambodia, I went to Cambodia the very first time. And uh, I saw that the harvest was very ripe. And uh, second time we went, why, I was walking through a rice field, and the rice field was overripe, and when I'd run the hands across the kernels, they'd fall on the ground. And I was bewildered, because in Cambodia, most of the time, they harvest a little on the green side, because they have to pack it from the field out to the main road mm -hmm. to where the thrashing machine is at. Mm -hmm. Now they got harvesters with just like harvesters in the rice fields outside here by Riverbank. You know, same thing with track layers and harvesters now, but and then they can harvest it right right there. Right there. And so anyway, I was kind of bewildered by it because well this basically this harvest is gonna be lost. It's gonna be lost. And so then I heard a voice. Now I'm not prone to voices. <laughs> I hope not. I mean, I've had a few voices, but they weren't off from God. <laughs> but anyway, and I, and it wasn't from within. It was behind, as if somebody was standing behind me. Wow. And the and the voice said, I don't know whether an angel or what it was. All I know is it was the Spirit of God. Amen. He spoke. Yes. And said, Look at this harvest. This harvest is ready now to be harvested, not five years from now, not two years from now. Right now, it's ready to be harvested now. And he said, so are the Cambodian people. Wow. They had a rough time through the Khmer Rouge, and many of them are suffering even today yet with many, many problems as a result of the war. Yeah. So consequently, they had no hope. Well, what happens when you have people that have no hope? They're ready for the gospel. Amen. They're That's ready right. for the gospel. That's right. And so, so anyway, he said, look at this harvest. It's ready to be harvested now. Thrust in the sickle and reap the harvest. And, and uh, he said, just brush them with the word of God as if it was not going to be difficult. Just brush them with the word of God. Amen. In other words, preach the gospel yep. in a simple way, yeah. and they'll come in. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. I mean, I it was traumatic to me mm -hmm. to have that experience, but I was we we're headed to a, a house to lead somebody to Christ. Mm -hmm. That's why I was going through the rice field, going mm -hmm. someplace. Wow. Because the roads, there was no road to where we had huh. to go. And so, so anyway, I said, Lord, if this is what you want me to do, you want me to come here, and I, and I indicated, and I had the feeling it was going to be full time, 
because I've still had my landscape maintenance business and and uh, and still uh, trying to make an income, you know. And so, I, if this is what you want me to do, you're gonna have to speak to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you laugh. That's all you can do. <laughs> and so, but anyway, we, I, and community. And a communication in Cambodia at that time, uh, you go outside the, the town, a major city, and there was no telephones. The only thing was shortwave radio. That was the only thing for communication. When you get outside of town, forget it for communication. And so, so anyway, I... So I didn't talk to her at all. In fact, I don't think I talked to you for that whole month. I don't think I even talked to her. Maybe two months. It was two months, yeah, because I was gone two months. So anyway, I came home and brought my suitcases in the house, and I put them down, and before I even said hello, she said, I guess we're going to Cambodia. <laughs> <laughs> Full time. Full time. Yeah. <laughs> So I said, well, how do you know? And then, she, of course, she told me the, the te her testimony. And yeah. You share that part. Yeah, we figured it, you know, um, with 14 hour difference time zone, we figured it was about They're the same completely time. on the other side of the world. So yeah. yeah. It's actually 14 hours difference. Jeez. So we figured out it must be about the same time. And uh, what was happening, I was washing the dishes, praying for Jerry while washing, you know, good time to pray when you wash dishes. I did, we didn't have a dishwasher, so it took a time. But all of a sudden, I saw these faces, right? I had an open face vision, just like I'm looking at you. There they were. Mm -hmm. And I saw them about, you know, quite a few of them. And uh, they, they looked, uh, they're looking at me, you know? And then I too audibly heard the voice of the Lord say, Go. And I looked at them and I said, But God. And so we thought, that's what you get for thinking, right? Mm -hmm. That God was, would, if we're going to go full time, we'd go to India because he spent a total of actually three years there. Wow. And uh, so I said, but God, these aren't Indian. They're not dark enough. They look like Cambodians. Mm -hmm. And when I said that, he said, what part of go don't you understand? Whoa. Mm -hmm. Not in that kind of way. It was <laughs> a loving way. Yeah. With urgency behind. It wasn't in a condemning way. Like, oh, don't strike me dead, God. No. Um, yeah, it was in a, in a wonderful, encouraging, and it was like, I, I remember looking up and I saw this like funnel coming down, and it was the love of God coming in me mm, yeah. for the wow. Cambodian people. I get Holy Ghost goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so, <laughs> and that's still with me today. I can't shake it. You yeah. can't shake it, you know. And so, oh, praise God. Praise God. God does confirm the wife. Put the husband together. Exactly. You know, exactly. we, we really believe in that. Amen. He's not going to call one and have the other one hate the whole thing the whole time. You That's know, right. So, um, so yeah. we packed up our little suitcase. Well, we start sharing. You know, we went to the mission boards and placed different places. And they all said, no, nope, we're not going to send you. You're too old. Oh, we were in our wow. 50s. Yeah. Okay. Too old. We were too old to go. Mm -hmm. And so no one would help us. No mission agency would help us. We checked the three different mission agencies. Yeah. Wow. And uh, and it didn't make any difference whether they had a calling or not. <laughs> and Jerry had been to Bible college, you know, and all that. He's got his degrees and everything. But so anyway, what happened was nobody believed. Um, they wouldn't send us. You're too old. They said, well, you're too sickly. Do I look sickly, you guys? No, no way. way. Seven years later, I mean, I was in no my fifties then. Do the math. You're okay. <laughs> you know? Let's not. Are they Christians? Are yeah. they Christians? Yes, they See, were. Christians so. lose their mind too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so that was horrible. We, we That's said, bad. I couldn't get She's that old. out. What part of go? Don't you She's understand? Old. I mean. Yeah. If I had to swim across the ocean, I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. So, you know, yeah, whatever. Well, paint this scenario. You have an experience with God. Then you got leadership telling you. You can't. You can't. Mm -hmm. What would you do? 
Wow. What would you do? Listen to God. God. Listen to God. Would you leave your, would you leave your family, your grandkids yes. and everything? Would you still go? Yes. yes. God says well, God. I, I know a lot of people that that's got a calling in their life, and they've been called, Come and on. they won't leave Amen. because they got grandkids. That's right. Uh-oh. Oh, Take them with them. Anyway, so um, so what happened was we felt that the Lord meant to start our own organization, our own 501c3, and find right. people who right. believe in the vision of it. That's what I'm talking about. And if we had Great. listened wow. and stayed home, I'm not saying that nobody else would have got saved of those 400 some thousand people, mm -hmm. but you know, God would have reached them too. I'm so, not yeah, saying somehow, just yeah. because of us, but we did go and they did come in. So, yes, <laughs> yes, uh, yes. so it was not, That's it bold. was not the organized church. Right. That, right. That encouraged it. <laughs> yeah. I know. It was the believers that were inside the I'm organized sure. church. Yeah. yeah. That recognized the gift and the calling Amen. and was willing to to pray for okay. us and send us out Hallelujah. into that. And so our testimony is quite different than most people. Most people are called out through the organized church. Mm -hmm. uh, to the mission field anyway. Correct. Uh, outside the country. Because right. in the outside country, you know, it's totally different. Here you're dealing with a whole different ball wax than than ministering to somebody on the streets of San Francisco or whatever. Oh, yeah, it's different. All Quite I different. can say is that with what Cambodia had been through with the Khmer yeah. Rouge, yeah. raise your hand if you know about the Khmer Rouge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little, little bit. bit. Okay. Yeah. There was an evil leader that came in, and they wanted to uh, put in communism. Yeah. Right. Rouge, oh. red, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Cambodian communism. And they... Ended up, I'm looking around to see how many of us are wearing glasses. For those of you who are wearing glasses, your whole family would have been slaughtered because it meant that you're educated. Wow. So out of six million people, three million people were either slaughtered or died from starvation wow. due to horrible conditions wow. that they promoted. So that only left about three million people. Currently, there's uh, 16 million, I think. 16, yeah. Yeah, and counting. And uh, so that left a horrible, horrible hole in Cambodia. Mm. They were, Bud made, uh, Cambodia is a Buddhist nation, and they, um, they slaughtered 80,000 monks. Okay. And so the foundation uh, of Buddhism monks. was destroyed, even though they say they're in Buddhist. In Christianity, there was never any organized number, so they really don't know how many pastors and believers church uh, believers were slaughtered. They had no idea because okay. it was not organized to the point to where they had any kind of audit or any kind of knowing how many believers were but we do know. So this was when the communist government took over? Yes. Uh -huh. They had the idea to destroy anybody that could read or write. All the teachers they tried to kill, which most of them were killed, any religious leaders, anybody could read or write, so that really, you know, math, any, so doctors, mathematicians, musicians, and so that really, they wanted to keep, they wanted to dumb down the people so they could control, control them. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it sounds like socialism, wow. doesn't it? Yeah. 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 We don't go there. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway. um, so these incredible Cambodian people, you know, they are so wonderful, they're so so precious and it was a terrible time and and they're really ashamed that it was different it wasn't like another country came in and did this you know it was genocide amongst their own they killed their own mm -hmm. and that has really and so we're still seeing the effects of that but one thing it has done it has opened their hearts up hey you my kind of guy my phone goes off too I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. Mine went off Bless twice already. Um, so, um, anyway, the people are open to the gospel, and there is total religious freedom in Cambodia. And one thing they do not allow is to, you know, uh, there's wonderful Muslims, there's wonderful Buddhists, and then there's uh, Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses. One thing where they do not allow you to do is to talk bad about one another. Amen. Wow. And cause so, any kind of friction yeah. between. But you're free to share. 
you know, not, not through manipulation, like come to my church and I'll give you rice. We call those rice Christians, you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll serve for whichever God will feed me. Mm. But we don't do any of that kind of stuff. It's just the pure word, the gospel message. And we are seeing people coming in still. We couldn't, yeah. So is it still communist? Or no. how, did it, how did it change? The word it was UN. through, there was a UN was involved in it. And so they had a pair. They had a Paris Peace Act in 1999, mm -hmm. and in that they drew out all the requirements, and the leadership at that time signed it, and they've been pretty much abiding by it. And uh, mm -hmm. as far as the religion's concerned, other things they're not abiding by, but but at least religiously they are. And so it now it is the. They do have elections. It's a constitutional it's monarchy. It's a constitution. They have a constitution. Like but it's a monarchy, and they do have a king. And the king has no power. <laughs> <laughs> basically, the, basically, the prime minister, he's yeah. the king. He's the, he's the powerhouse. Yeah. He controls. But that doesn't mean the king doesn't have things to say. But he does step to things. And they every time he does say something, it weighs heavily on the decision that they have. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's pretty free. It's pretty free. You can go on the street corners and share the gospel mm -hmm. with no problem. Mm -hmm. And meeting together, groups of five, 10, 15,000, that's no problem. Before COVID. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but so it's uh, not a problem. That's a, uh, you know, and so, so here, here we are with many people that saw the relatives being killed or they themselves, part of the Khmer Rouge, because our church members are not only the one, the victims, but they are also the perpetrators. Oh. We've got the Khmer Rouge, many Khmer Rouge in our, in our churches, because we're up in the Northwest where when Vietnam came in to liberate, yeah. they pushed them all up into the north part of, of Cambodia, and that's our province, and that's where the most Khmer Rouge there are in the country is in that, that area there. And uh, and so here you're dealing with the victims of the Khmer Rouge and the perpetrators, the killers, so what that happened, have become that have become Christian. What happened is, um, like in other countries where this horrible people take over, they take the small children and start training them. And the, the scenario would be is, if you want to live, you kill your mother and your father. Oh. And so that's what they did. They killed. And these were these kids. are eleven, twelve, thirteen year old kids. Yeah. Oh, and they're wow. older now, right? So they're still dealing with all that. Were, and were, were they just being influenced by the communists that were in rule at that point? Did, I mean, it was a satanic get, thing. Yeah. So yeah, it was a satanic thing. You know, oh. it just was like they just went totally bonkers yeah. with evil. Oh. And they were so afraid and of dying, so they would do anything oh. to die. So they wouldn't have to die. Oh, they were being threatened. No, oh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. You kill or be killed. Oh. And so, that, that was the motto. And what, what we saw happening was some of those is in order to mentally justify killing their own parents or killing their own family members, they went ahead and started killing others because they had to like keep going or else they'd have to come to grips with the fact that they killed their own family. We, we so have it's really we've sad. had many testimonies of the Khmer saying that they were the killers. They said, after a period of time, they hungered to kill people. Yes, mm -hmm. the spirit. It didn't start out that way. But they hungered to kill people. And it was like satisfying that evil that was within, within them. It was a real evil, I mean, a demonic thing that happened to that country. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, but praise God. Mm -hmm. The killing fields have become the healing fields, right? God yes. has come God. in there and healed. He's healing that nation. Amen. And the hearts are being of the children being returned to their fathers because that is just a real problem. The abandonment issue is at epidemic proportion in Cambodia. It is. Epidemic. Epidemic. Because they were abandoned through violence and that strange thing that happens. Uh, Same here in America. 
you know. There's a lot of abandonment. Bar, oh. Yeah, so they they didn't bond, so now they're abandoning, and we're seeing second generation now of abandonment. Yeah. So that's another thing that we're doing with. Yeah. So here, here we're dealing with people that are basically we would classify them as dysfunctional. Yeah. And then you get you get two dysfunctional people that are married, and they really don't gel, and their uh, marriages are arranged. So really, you don't marry. Yeah. More so now because more people are getting married for love now. But before it was all part of the Buddhist thing. Mm -hmm. Marriage was the, grand, the, the parents of both sides would find a compatible cheese. Yeah. And, and then they would control them until, they're, until they maybe, most of the time, the people controlled until they're in their middle 20s. They live in their house. Controlled by their parents or or in-laws, and they're controlled. And so, and a lot of that is because of military, a lot of military people. People, you know. And in our 400 some pastors, over a hundred of them that we have mm -hmm. are former Khmer Rouge that were killers. Wow. That are pastors today. Wow. Whoa. How many? A hundred. Wow. We, we had one man, okay. He unfortunately he got killed in an uh, um, accident a couple of years ago. But we called him Grandfather Moses. He was such a spiritual man, but he grew up young having killed people. Oh. And he killed people in his village. Now, to tell you the testimony and the power of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. right? When he became a believer, well, he was looking, he wanted to be. He was, you know, the, the sin, the guilt was just so much. So he, he stayed in a Buddhist temple for a while, but that didn't... He basically he, hid. Yeah. And that, they, had a, they had a warrant out for your arrest. Good oh. God. But he was trying to get appeasement, mm -hmm. and he couldn't find it. So he became a believer. Mm -hmm. What he did was he went back to his the village where he <clears throat> killed family members of oh. these people and asked them for forgiveness. Wow. And the power... God was so heavy on him. Mm. So what do you think those village people would do? Right? Right. What do you think they would do? They forgave, they 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 forgave him right. and exactly. Right. Were you there, Kim? <laughs> <laughs> you just know it, right? Yeah, yeah because they saw he was a changed man. Yeah. Yeah. That's like a Paul thing. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. And he, he changed, and <laughs> That's awesome. they saw it, and so, you know, a, a strong church. This is Jerry's right-hand man, so Ken. He's been with our ministry for 19 years, right wow. from the start, wow. practically. Right. And, uh, and we work real close, and he's the, he's the pastor to all the pastors. Wow. wow. He's our, our pastor to the pastors, and uh, he's uh, very wise. He's got, he's got education. He's uh, had two years of college, so not only graduated, and graduation is uh, probably half the people in Cambodia graduate. Half. Half. And uh, half the people graduate. After the 12-year, 12th 12 grade, oh. graduate. They don't pass their test, though. About 17% yeah. do. <laughs> so anyway. Oh, my God. Um, we can pass some of these around. These are some of the things... So these are, this is a, every month we have our um, district leader meeting, okay, wow. we could do that. Now, they, these leaders, are there 70, you know, when we set the system up way back, the Lord says, I want you to, to have leadership of only so many. So this leader would take care of so many people, then you'd have so many, mm -hmm. take so many, uh, right. to, to have it organized to, put, to where nothing goes through the cracks. Yeah, yes. No 300, no 500, no. no. 50 is about maximum that any pastor that really could take care of anybody is only 50, not 300, not 5,000. Because there's the, the, they, they, they go through the cracks, they disappear, nobody follows up on them, they're hurting. Nobody's following up on them. Did, didn't Jesus set them into the groups? Well, yeah, when he fed the 5,000, he did them in groups. Yeah. Yeah. In the groups of 50. 
Sure. And, right. and, Mo, and Moses, when he set things up, he set them up, organized it too. Yeah. He had it organized to where no one would be left behind. No one left behind. Amen. Amen. So we have 70 district leaders then who have the other leaders underneath we, them. And these, leaders would our, we, these would be our, these would be our like bishops, if you want to, if you want to call them like bishops. Mm -hmm. They're and they're over certain areas, and some of them have, some of them have. 40, 50, or 60 pastors mm -hmm. under them, and they are responsible for all the well-being of all of our other pastors. So this is the way I set it up, and oh, yeah. it's the way the Lord had us do it, because right. there has to be somebody who has some authority. Yes. 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 Absolutely. But then you have and well, early, early on, when it was just Sakin and I, we would have to go out physically to all of our locations to deal, deal with issues, wow. deal with uh, problems, and they didn't know how to bear, they didn't know how to do funerals, they didn't know how to do baby dedication, um, they didn't know how to preach the gospel, they didn't know how to have a church service, they didn't know how to do any of that, they, nothing. Wow. So once they got that done, we taught them, and then of course now it's reproduced, you know. Oh, wow, Before COVID hit, we had over 70,000 children in Bible Club every oh, week. Amazing. So uh, here's a picture of wow. Bible Club and a house church together. Wow. And wow. Also, the military on top of that. Yeah, they have big churches over there too. Uh, uh, I think the biggest one is like 500 in Phnom Penh. And uh, that's about it. Most of them are probably average from uh, 15 to 50. Okay. That's the average size church in a building. A group, yeah. In a building. Mm -hmm. And, but we have... How about 5,000 house is, churches? This is a church. This is one of our house churches. In the military. We've wow. been working in the military now for almost 16 years now. Wow. And many, many military have come to Christ. And many of our pastors were for, used to be military. Uh, they were part of the Khmer Rouge and part of the military. And wow. so they understand organization. They understand. They're really good as far as uh, 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 exhibiting their authority. Of course, the military, you know, the, the military do a good job of showing their authority, don't they? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Except they show the authority under Christ with compassion. Here, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, Kim, you mentioned you know, earlier. You mentioned about you know about ministering. You know, God sent us to Cambodia, but God sends all of us somewhere every day. That's Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. And so, Amen. you know, not all of us can go to Cambodia. And I, you you touch people's lives that I will never touch. Your circle right. of influence, your circle of influence yep. is different. Everybody touches different lives. You're right. And so here's a picture of um, one of our pastors. He just he's not even wearing a shirt. Okay, this would not be acceptable in the United States. He's not even wearing a shirt. Not even a tie. <laughs> not even a tie. <laughs> but armed with the word of God and hey. out there in the open, he ran into some people and led them to the Lord. I mean, Hallelujah. Right I don't know what kind of just out in the jungle somewhere. Wow. Oh, that's great. That's beautiful. Yes. We that's currently beautiful. do have about 40 church buildings that were built by by some people in the United States and, and uh, Korea. Korean buildings church before. Uh, but before the COVID, we were running around 400 churches on Sunday. Wow. And there was only about 40 of them in buildings. The rest of them were in houses, under tree, uh, or someplace to where they met. Some of the groups that were outside, some of the groups were as much as 100 people on Sunday morning uh, uh, under a tree. Wow. Mm -hmm. We have seen a phenomena there. Uh, you build, we have a hundred meeting under a tree, and then, you know, the pastor says, oh, you know, we like to have it, and the church building gets built, and only 25 show up. <laughs> because they like meeting out in the open. Yes. And so, uh, he says 400 
We're not into numbers, but this is to give praise and glory to God, okay? This Amen. Is to show you the move of God that he said 400 churches uh, and house churches that meet on Sunday. But during the week, okay, yeah. there's probably another 5,000 house churches that meet during the week. During the week. So, yeah. See, originally we started before we had any buildings. Before it had any buildings, we had as many as seven or 8,000 house churches on Sunday before building any buildings. And then they wanted to be, have a church. They wanted to have a church building. So we put and said, okay, you got to have 50 members in your church that come on a regular basis before we even think about building the church. Wow. But well, they built the church, and without failure, it's half the amount. Wow. It's just weird how that happens. Huh? Do we have women pastors? Yes, we do. This is one of the women's pastor. Uh, her and her husband are an awesome couple. <laughs> when they go to a village, when they go to a village, the wife will take care of the children, and he'll preach to the adults mm -hmm. together. That's and then she certain. ministers to the women too. So, but man, he could be your brother. It's him. <laughs> <laughs> So this this lady here, oh, she's so sweet, and we lovingly call her the sniffer. The sniffer. Yeah. Sniffer. The sniffer. <laughs> because in Cambodia, if you if they really love you a lot, they do this strange thing. They come up to you like this. <laughs> <laughs> You're really in. They smell you. Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't know whether they're trying to figure out, smell your essence or your. They believe in I don't know. It. It's like they want to just take in all of you into themselves. Wow. It's know? okay, but if you so, don't take a bath, Joe Biden. You know they're going to do it, so you. You better yeah, take a dip. Wrong, yeah. No, we have many. We have many of the women that do that now, oh, and good. it's like when yeah. you're when you're accepted, yeah. that's happened, you know. How yeah. they just don't kiss them? No, they don't kiss them. The men sniff too. No, they don't. The men don't sniff. Even when they get married, they don't kiss. Even when they get married and they, 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 they pronounce them husband or wife, they don't kiss. They might, and every it's like the show. Is she gonna kiss him? Is he gonna kiss her? No. Is he gonna do it? Is he gonna do it? <laughs> and then get the whole crowd all worked up, and then he would kiss her on the cheek. Oh, that uh, that kind of display of public affection yeah. is very sexual to them. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. So it's like you might as well, you know, never mind. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. So, Save it for later. so when, <laughs> when the foreigners come and then they hang out all over themselves, they're out there just making out, you know, they're all going, oh, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, they're like this. So there's still a sweet purity and innocence there that we love, okay. Yeah. Here's a, a church building, one, an open church, so... A lot of churches are built that way. You've got the breeze, the wind going right through. Maybe you just have a roof and maybe one wall or maybe two walls, but everything otherwise open. Doesn't it rain there a lot? Yeah. Yeah, six months. Do <laughs> so they like to be down in the rain? Or? There it rains. It just dumps for 15, 20 minutes and then the rest it's of the day. It's the rest of the day or something. Uh, it's just the it's it dumps, like a, it dumps. It's, it's kind of like a cycle that goes through for six months. Maybe four o'clock every afternoon, you'd have a rain, clear up. Next day, four o'clock, do it again, <laughs> and then it'll slowly creep like seven o'clock at night, midnight, it's middle weird. of the night, and by the end of the season, like that's how it works. That kind of huh. yeah. that's crazy. So, we have um, uh, a church in Turlock. Bless them, they bought us a whole bunch of motorcycles because we do, did provide motorcycles for our leaders That's their to go out on. That's their transportation. And so they're on their way, a pastor and then a children's ministry together, so they go out in teams. And that's what happens on the slippery roads, you know. I had a feeling. <laughs> it's like... 
Oh, it's, right. like, uh, <laughs> it's like it's like ice. <laughs> when that mud is mud it's is red. like ice. Just think you could have a pink one. Oh, really? Yeah, a pink I one. saw a red one. A red one too. Yeah, it's Holy just Spirit. Was fun very that far. Was fun. <laughs> and our, our uh, Bibles are very accessible there. Okay, mm -hmm. so we we provide Bibles. Those who are attending a house church for more than three months, they'll get a bigger Bible. They start out with a, a Gideon's Bible, the New Testament. So, um, anyway, he's one of our amazing leaders. So we have an ample supply of Bibles yes. that are available. Praise God. I read a book a while back that when they were communists, that um, they would kill anybody who had a Bible. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you had, a, them, the if you had a school book, yeah. if you had a school book, right. they would kill you, too. Wow. Because yeah. you're educated. Goodness. You, is that your wife? Okay. Okay. Going to be. To be. Oh, to, be. Oh, to, be to be or not to be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is so no longer the question, right? We're going to get married well, in August. Well, okay. well okay. congratulations. Thank you. But are you and your wife to be, and if you have any children, they all would have been slaughtered because you wear glasses. That oh, my gosh. Man, that's so. Oh, God. Contacts. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> time to get contacts. And if you didn't have calluses on your So what? Oh, my God. The, so during the Khmer Rouge, yeah. many people That's hid crazy. the Bibles, mm -hmm. buried it in the ground or mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. so nobody would find any materials because mm -hmm. that's a true sign of one who they were after, is to kill the educated. So many of our All pastors, right. that during that pastor and people who were Christian before the Khmer Rouge and during the Khmer Rouge, they hid their Bibles, buried them, or put yes. them in a tree, or, yes. or something, so they wouldn't be found. They would hide them page yeah. by page. In yeah. different and yeah. and yeah. many of them, they would check to see if you had calluses on your hands. If you had, if you didn't have calluses, that means you were a, a bookworm, and, <laughs> and you didn't work physically, so therefore you're educated. Yeah. And they kill you. Oh, they kill you. Oh, my God. And the family. Yeah, yes, and the family. Oh, my God. So here, you know, this is just all passing around. This is just how how it is over there, you know, just meeting. Here's one of our children's one of our children's uh, meetings, and they meet together and they have children's workers that uh, share the gospel and share the uh, many of the stories in the Bible, and they have a coloring crayon that uh, crayon pictures that they color. I love this picture because it captures this woman here. It captures how I see so many of them just so in love with Jesus, right? Oh, passion. Isn't that just beautiful? Yeah. And we do see miracles there in the power. You know, we're full gospel over there. Okay? All right. Yeah. Amen. Here's the sniffer. <laughs> One her. She's the sniffer. Uh, laying hands on uh, this woman. She's very, very sick. She got burned, and I don't know what all happened to her, but she's very sick. In, in the Cambodia, in Cambodia, they got ribbons, and they put chains around their uh, chains with some kind of a lead thing. It's kind of like a, uh, to ward off the evil spirit. Mm -hmm. Wow. Here, this girl had a string around it and with something on it, and it was to ward off the evil spirits, and when they could become... Christians, we cut off all those things yeah. to cut off all the attachments yeah. that they have with the, with with Satan, because we have to do it. If they don't, that just gives place to the devil. Yeah. Oh, and sure. that's that's one thing in America. We've got some of these things that we need to cut off too in our house. That's right. The need because you're giving place to the devil. Yeah. You can't feel why is this happening? Why is this happening? It's because of some kind of an attachment. Yeah. And Satan is given place in the in your in, in your lot in your house. And what would be an example of that? Uh, I'll take it, Jerry. Huh? What do you mean example? I, I'd say like like things from other countries that you don't know. What's Symb been religious symbols? Religious symbols, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like all these little statues, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Whether it's Hindu or Mary. <laughs> well, I mean, there, there was a time years and years ago that we had to get rid of our Jimi Hendrix and our Beatles and all that because they said there was right. a demon attached to that. Oh, well, we didn't they, believe that, but we listened and we got rid of that. So, but, anyway. <laughs> but they said, but any kind of attachment, 
statues, yeah. some cat statues. That's right. Wow. When um, Cambodia, when I first got there, I saw all these cute birdhouses. Everybody had these cute little birdhouses up front. Then I found out that those are spirit houses. Oh right my there. God. Halter. Yeah, so they believe that every piece of property, you know, they're very spiritually minded, okay? Yeah, they mm -hmm. just yeah. don't know the truth, okay? Right. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. yeah. It's more than superstitious. It's, oh. it's, it's a fact. It's, um, I look at superstition as not being real, you know, but this is real. Okay, they, they know that there is a demonic yeah. Influence attached Round. to a piece yeah. of property. Territorial demons. Oh. Territorial demons. So they make a pact and say, if you allow me to build my house, we'll put a spirit house and we'll appease you every day, offer you food and things every day, and pray oh to you. Burn, burn incense or something. Yeah. And they oh, pray. Like Basically, to, to yeah. give attention to them. And you know, demons like attention. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. if they don't do that, they manifest, okay? <laughs> Uh, so they're, they're trying to appease the demons. Yeah. Instead of getting rid of it. Stay right. on the good side. Right. Stay on the good side. And the amazing thing is, I mean, I cannot put a piece, a crumb of bread on the ground without five minutes. It's covered by ants. They put all this food out there. No ants, no flies. Not, not even the animal world even dares to touch that food. Wow. It's really bizarre. It's really so they were not cute. Birdhouses. Houses, no, birds went no birds went in there either. In fact, one time we had we had uh, some people <coughs> from Cambodia move to the United States, and they were visiting for about six months. And their daughter, uh, two daughters, were staying at the house where they lived, and they had an altar there that their parents that their up. parents put up themselves. They put up themselves, and they asked us about what about taking that thing down while they're gone. I said, don't you touch it. Yeah. Did you put it up? No. Then you don't have authority to take it. You don't have authority to take it down. Mm -hmm. So they decided they'd do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, the one daughter got real sick and ended up dying. Mm -hmm. wow. Some strange died, and the Lord really showed us that she did this without authority, and she opened up the door. Wow. Satan came in there and brought something and killed her. And, and so, the other daughter went crazy. And she went, yeah, she went crazy. That's what was saying. Wow. And you know. Now, it, we said, now, why don't you wait till they come back? And he ended up be, became a Christian. The father and the mother did become Christians, but they hadn't taken that altar down yet. And I said, when they get back, then we'll discuss it. Then we can take it down together with them because they have authority because they put it up. So, wow. So over there, it's the spirit God. world is very strong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We went to a Buddhist wedding one time, okay? Just to clear this one up. Uh, they don't, uh, where we're at, uh, where our daughter, we have a daughter and son-in-law that live in Cambodia as well. In their area, they do sacrifice, animal sacrifice. They're, they're, wow. they're animists, they're not Buddhists. But the Buddhists did not do sa uh, animal sacrifices. So when they get married, one side of family, and I don't know why this is, but one side of family brings a cooked pig, and the other side of family brings a cooked chicken. So what do they do with that? Well, they sit together, and they make covenant. Oh. They make covenant with Satan. Oh, okay. yeah. Just in case you're wondering if um, it's not Satan they're calling up. It was oh, like, a, like a pact. A pact. Mm. A pact. Oh, wow. They call upon... The ruler of the kingdom of darkness, the keeper of the gates of hell, we offer this to you. Please leave our children alone and bless this marriage. You wouldn't want Satan to bless your marriage, right? You wonder why there's so many parental problems. So, you know, not a good way to start your marriage, right? But praise God when they come believers, all that's undone. So, wow. We have many old people in Cambodia. And, uh, in fact, we started a new program last year, taking care of widows. You know, the Bible says pure religion unfiled is take care of the orphans and the widows. We now have about 170 widows that wow. we're taking care of. They're actually church members from various different, various different uh, provinces, and 
they are also taking care of grandchildren. Because mm -hmm. the abandonment issue yeah. to yeah. Cambodia is still. Mm -hmm. A wife so. and a husband get divorced. He goes his way, marries someone else, and he don't want the kids. Mm -hmm. She marries another man, and he doesn't want their kids, so where do the kids go? Grandma. Pushed on the grandma. Yeah. And here you got 80 year old grandmothers yeah. taking care of five grandchildren. Wow. Four, five, some some that six. Yeah. We have one that has nine. But, wow. but how is she supposed to help? 80 years old, she don't have a job. Where's the money going to come from? Where's all the food going to come from to take care of them? The government probably helps them. There is no social security, yeah. there's nothing for welfare. Basic. I mean, they have some, but very little. Ten dollars a pen. I'm uh, just speaking of that. Um, that's a great ministry that I did give to you as well. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Um, but I'm curious, what is your protocol, or what's what do you have in place to make sure this money gets to these widows or to the other? I mean, do you have some kind of system? I would assume. Yes. <laughs> we have established leadership that we've had. Most of them have been with us at least 15 to 16 years. And so they're already established in the record. We have the record with them and we know them very, very well. And in fact, our, our uh, bishops, bishops are bring the accountability to about those people we give the money to them. And, to, and for them, the criteria is they must deliver it to their house. Don't come to a church or someplace to pick it up. You gotta take it to their house and then you have to have, take a photograph of all the stuff that you gave them. And then we get a photograph from them and that's how we know that they're getting it. Okay. We're remodeling houses, some of the houses too. And uh, so, some of them are really are really bad shape. I, yeah. it would it would shake you in your boots when you see yeah. if you got boots. If you got sandals, shake in your sandals. <laughs> 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 yeah. And so so now there's about seven hundred there's about seven hundred children that are with these hundred seventy widows. Wow. And so we. We uh, get that to them, and, and uh, we there's the criteria. If you if you're divorced and your husband is gone, you're not a widow. You're a divorcee. And chances are, chances are he will he does support some. But if, but these the the ones that we widows we do are truly orphans. And they're ones who cannot even take care of themselves, let alone the, the, the children. And so it's a widow indeed. Now, based upon the widow of uh, Hannah, she went to the church every every day and prayed and everything else. So she was truly a widow, a widow indeed. These here are widows. They don't go to the church, but they have a need. Can't and so, so that's one program that we just took on this last year, and it's really, really blessing a lot of people. And uh, it's it's a new, it's a new uh, thing for these widows to experience help. And some Cambodians do help some, and they they'll bring some stuff to them, but from from Cambodia and. We get it, some of them, we get videos back saying in Cambodian, like, thank you very much for helping us. And yes, we get videos back from them, so it just tears our heart out when we see. But that was a really good question that Jerry had because, um, you know, like I said, I'm, I told him I'm Dutch, and he goes, well, he is too. You know, Dutch people are tight. We we like to keep track of the money. <laughs> you know, want to know where your money went. <laughs> we like to go on Dutch dates, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> have that named after us, right? Must be wow. So, um, yeah, so it's every, so I'm working with 15 pastors now. I'm continually on contact with them. And when I look at every month, they have to send me a picture of what they gave them. 
and we trust them. It's not like I'm watching, are they wearing the same outfit as they were last month? <laughs> no, no, none of that, because we trust them, you know. Although probably if I'm suspicious, I would, but I have no reason to be suspicious. These, these guys are awesome. They went out, I don't know if any of you saw the video that we had of the flooding. We've, we fed 1,500 families. Wow, these really? pastors go out there and it's do not it. like come to the church. And they were wading in water this carrying whoa, a sack of rice whoa. in water this deep to take They're it to a, a widow to her house. Oh. So, you Does know. Does that destroy it? I mean, like, you get floods in here, it just destroys the whole home. I mean, do they have to rebuild the Well, house? that's why most of the houses are this on up higher. Yeah. Yeah. The house is either metal, cement, or wood, so it, it's not like you know, plasterboard. That well, every the most home, the average home in the countryside is at least four feet high. Wow. Some of them are eight to ten feet high. Some of them put their cars underneath or, mm. or their tractors or whatever yeah. underneath. Yeah. But and it's long. not only for that; it's because there's a lot of crawling things at night. Oh, yeah. uh. kind of like Louisiana. <laughs> so you got snakes. You got snakes trying to come out. Oh, yeah. and, uh, Oh my God. This is one of my favorite pictures. Isn't that just great? Uh, and we also uh, support pastors who have taken in a bunch of kids themselves. So we just. Uh, Here's one of our pastors in one of the areas. His place happened to be flooded, and he's staying on a piece of wood. He's a really one of our faithful pastors, and. Uh, so this. Oh, this, uh, they got hit really hard by the flood. That's the way over there, isn't it? Yeah. So, anyway, we just, you know, we have more You can say, well, how do we get the money to these pastors? Hey, we got a thing called Wing. Wing? Wing. wing. You go to a Wing place, give them their money, yeah. and yeah. they, uh, it's attached to the telephone. I'll be down. It's attached to the telephone, they go to another Wing place. Show them their phone number and they get the cash. Wow. wow. In the middle of nowhere, they have a wing That's place. That's crazy. It looks so like we, this. So we have no problem getting money to people who need it. Wow. The same day. Wow. I mean, if I go at 9 o'clock, by 10 o'clock, they have their money. Wow. You know, that's five hours, six hours away. Mm -hmm. We have wing stop here, but. Wing stop. Yeah. What's that? That's Chicken wings. <laughs> the chicken wings. Stop. The wings are chicken wings, right? Anyway, I like so your wings better. We're just, <laughs> to sum it all up, we're just so honored and privileged that God sent us there to reach these incredible, wonderful people That's great. that Christ died for. You yeah. know? Yeah. He died for every last one. Amen. Just like he died for every last one here all over the world. Amen. But what? that's the area God sent us to. We, we, we had talked about making disciples early on. Yes. Yes. Our, our goal at the beginning was every believer is a witness. Yes. Amen. So we teach them from the beginning when they get born again that now you have Christ living in you. Now you are a witness. You are an ambassador for the kingdom of God. Wow! And so they don't learn that. They don't learn to be. Uh, the, the, they don't learn that. Uh, uh, yeah, they know that that's what they do. That part of being a Christian is being a witness. And so that's what we imply into all of our all of our believers. And the, when you go to look back, I mean, I have to pinch myself. But looking back when we went there, I had the heart for the lost. I had a heart for church planting. I had a heart for, for discipleship, making everybody a, a witness. I, I've implanted that into the lives of all of our leadership. So all of our leadership are basic apostolic. They got a heart for church planting. They got a heart for expanding the kingdom of God. So, in our lives, what are we producing? What are we reproducing? And when we stand before God, God's gonna say, "What have you done? What have you done?" He's not. He's not judgment. He's just asking, "What? What did you do 
with your life and Christ living in you. What are you doing? Your book of life. Yeah. Rewarded accordingly. Yeah. And um, like Paul, he he told the I don't know was it Ephesus or where was Ephesians? He said, "My desire is to see fruit added to your account." That was his desire. So wherever we see anybody, my desire is to see. Fruit that's added to your account that you could stand before God to give Him something. Coming back here this year has been something because the fruit that I'm seeing is fear and um, just this this thing about you know, have you apologized for being white? Like Jesus answered that question a long time ago on the cross. We're all one humankind. He loves us. He died for all. You know, rip off the skin. We're all the, we're all the same. Just yes, If you look at a bouquet of roses, are you going to say, oh, you know, that white rose is better than the red rose or the green, whatever, purple rose. It's silly. We're God's bouquet of people. Yes. And, you know, and the love that God places in our heart for one another, Satan is trying to come and just destroy yes. that. By pitting people one against another. And so it's really difficult when we came back to see that here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so. the last five years we've seen uh, a digression that we have seen yeah. right. in society and uh, the political manipulation. Mm-hmm. And it, that's sad for us to see this happen in our country because we are Americans. We're not Cambodians, although we live in Cambodia. So we're still American, yeah. and we have a heart for the what's going on here in, in the United States. So. And Kim, mm-hmm. over there, I want to just say thank you for doing a house church. Yeah, exactly. Because part of the problem this, in the United States is the church has not been doing his job, its job, her job, I should say, right? Because the church has let different do- false doctrines come in. It's okay if you're left together because you're a tither. Yeah. Oh. Uh, it's okay, all these other things. You know what I'm talking about. We won't even need to go into that. Right. But the church has left standing up for righteousness and repentance and forgiveness. And this is the result of that. Nobody is standing up to just, you know, you love people and you share the hope of God with them. Right. But God yes. doesn't want us to stay in our sin. He has yeah, that's right. victory for us. That's right. You know, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can overcome everything. That's right. You know, everything. And so I pray I pray God that, up. because this is what because there's a lot of people who are not going to church anymore. That's right. That's right. And not because of COVID. Right. That's right. Maybe they got hurt, something was done, or something yeah. doctrine or whatever. Whatever it might be, this is the answer. This is the answer for today. I believe that too. We this are is the, the answer church. for the day. We is small church. groups. Right. House yes. churches. Yes. That's right. Yeah. And and then and then uh, there's some groups now that we've known some groups now that they can give all the money to mission. Yeah. Because they're not supporting a pastor. Right. And there's, nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with supporting a pastor here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Very poor. Very poor. Like people poor. Yeah. Yeah. Not surface, not any surface, not no. traffic, not water, not eating. More people here can go to school. Yeah. Yes. Can buy anything. Yeah. 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 From Canada, my country. Very bad. Very bad. Can't. Can't buy fruit eating or bread eating. Right. Cambodia is also better. Not just Cambodia. But Cambodia Cambodia is doing better now. Many countries. Many countries. Yeah. Many countries. Oh, my country. The government. Very, very not good to the surface. They're not taking care of their chicken. Not good. Government. Child, children to school. Oh my God! Yeah. Yeah. 
terrible. 2003 to, to, to this day. And it wasn't because of COVID either. No, it was no. Yeah. Just no school. Bible study. Bible study. You know, yeah. we, we need to lift up other countries that Amen. are suffering Amen. like this, you know. Like also Syria, like Syria, Sudan, 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 Syria, Iraq, Syria, 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 my house from Iraq, my son or my brother. Oh my yeah. God. Because my her, because her uh, dad got to her. Yeah. Her church or her, uh, her son. Mm-hmm. Army. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the government abuses the, the people. Not government, yeah. not. Uh, we have in the before 2003, we have one president, not good. But now we have thousand ah. president, not good, mm. in Iraq. Mm. After 2003. Not government. The poor people. They yeah. stole There's no, uh, nothing. They stole everything. There's from nothing. Saudi, from Iran, from uh, Jordan, from Kuwait. Uh-huh. Turkish. 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 Yeah. The Turkish? Oh. Yes, Turkish. also Turkish. Yeah. Iran, Erdogan, all the cities. He's a monster, that guy. They they come to Iraq and destroy everything. Oh my God! (laughs) After 2003, seven militia. Seven. Seven different, different. Yes. Um, Yes. Wow. The enemy is real. This for law. From two days now, Baghdad is not good. Baghdad in danger. Mm -hmm. I hear the biggest underground church Mm -hmm. is. Actually, in Iran. That's why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God is moving. Why I come here? Why I come here? Many people are Many people. Yeah. Why I come here? Because my house, militia. Oh my Lord God. All my house. <gasps> yeah. Oh my God. Tonight. In the nighttime. Yeah. One morning. Mm. One o'clock morning. Mm. Come oh, on, wow. militia. My house. Without any reason. Why? Because, yeah. I don't know why. We don't, we don't belong. Right. Yes, you love the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now have my family in Iraq and Baghdad. Yeah. I saw my wife and my son here just. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the rest of them are over there. Now That's my son, my son, why my son? Army. Mm-hmm. They made him go? Yeah. He can't go to Iraq. Jeez. If anybody finds out, understand my son here, army, go to Baghdad, uh-huh. militia. And kill their sister and brother. My they kill their family. Her, yeah, his sister, wow. his brother. So my <laughs> sister and the brother, they work uh-huh. in the uh-huh. apartment. Uh-huh. Apart- uh-huh. Airport. Their son work, uh, works in, in Texas, yes. in the Army. Yes. Mm-hmm. No, Texas, Texas. Go and talk to uh, three months, three months, two months, Texas, and go to Kuwait. Yes. No, now we right. Kuwait. Yes. Good God. Can we take a moment and just pray for this? Yes. 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 Okay. yes. Can we tell to come up here and pray? You know, as 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 they're talking, I'm I'm just you know uh, concerned about mm-hmm. even America. Yes. And um, when we, you know, heard about the communists take over there, the Rouge, um, and you know how how socialism is trying to infiltrate into our country. That's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. And that just leads us further into toward communism. Yeah. And 
and the lack of freedom, and then you got the control of, of other dictatorial things. Military and, and stuff. Military, yes. It's crazy. And um, so as we pray, as we pray for their family, let, let us also just pray, you know, that, that, that God will supersede. You know, many have said that we are on the verge and even already beginning uh, a, a third uh, wake, a third move of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That this is a, and, and so Father, we just, we just pray yes, for this family. Yes, Lord. And, and uh, Lord, we just uh, believe, Father, for your protection upon yes. their son that's uh, in the military. Yes. Lord, uh, commission your angels to watch yes. over this, yes. this family and yes. other loved ones that Protect they have them. over in Iraq and, yes. and in yes, that region Lord. of the world, in Kuwait and, and, and so forth, wherever they might have family members. We, we just pray your protection upon them. Yes. Uh, Lord, uh, we just pray for a move of your Holy Spirit yes. throughout yes. throughout the world. Yes. Lord, uh, without you, we know there is no hope. Yes. And, yes. and the cruelty yes. of mankind yes. apart yes. from you yes. is yes. just so horrible. Yes. And, and so, Lord, we just, we just pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, yes. you yes. will anoint more people like Wilma yes. and Jerry that are yes. going into... Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, yes. Yes. to every individual. And Father, do the same for our dear brother yes. uh, and his wife and his family in, in that region of the world. Yes, um, Lord. We pray that the gospel will be preached yes. unhindered. Lord, yes. make there a mighty move of God throughout yes. uh, Iraq, Iran, yes. and that whole region of the yes. world, yes, Lord. Yes. Let there let the people turn to you. Let the hearts, let the hearts be tender toward God. Change their hearts, Lord. Yes, send forth your word, Lord. Bring healing and wholeness to these areas, Lord. Bring wholeness and healing to our brother and his family, Lord, where they lost their homes and and their jobs and things like that. Uh, we, we just pray for a move of God. It's the only answer. Yeah. Yeah. The only, only yeah. answer. Peace. Yeah. Peace. Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Can you pray also for, like what Jerry was mentioning, what happened in Cambodia is happening right here in America. Yeah. And yeah. Our noses. Yeah. There's blackmail. There's people that are not telling the truth because they're threatening. Right. That their family's going to be killed. killed. And that's why this election was stolen. stolen. People and the Supreme Court is not. Yeah. we got to pray against the enemy and, and yeah. to remove the people that are blackmailing the people in our country. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Will, that God's righteousness. Oh, yeah. The whole thing. A, lot of senate, a lot of senators and a lot of oh, the uh, uh, Supreme Court judges yeah. have been threatened. Yes. Very, very very don't threat. lead us in that prayer. Amen. Yes. And I, I do, but we need to lift minutes. up those those things. Are, yes. Go ahead, Jerry. You pray. You pray, bro. Okay. No, no, you pray. You, you pray. pray. God, put it on your heart. You Heavenly pray. Father, yes. 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 thank you for the opportunity to come here and meet yes. together yes. as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, and God. Yes. Lord, you spit on our hearts, Lord, for America and for yes. this world. And that yes. glory with would shine and that yes. your righteousness and justice would prevail yes. Yes. not only in America but throughout the world yes. Yes. Lord, where two or three are gathered in your name and we agree Amen. we yes. agree against yes. the enemy Lord that you would remove the people who are blackmailing yes. others who would bring out the truth and give us the freedom the justice and the righteousness the justice and righteousness that America yes. deserves, yes. that this world deserves, Lord, yes. and that your people deserve. There's a great harvest, Lord, and your yes. glory is here, and we just pray for your power, and we take the enemy, and we put him under our feet, and we demand that we demand that we confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, yes. the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and we rebuke that power. Yeah. That the enemy, the blackmail, 
whatever's going on, we just we re rebuke yes. that. We bind it in the name of Jesus. Yes. And we just pray that your glory might prevail. Yeah. And yes. that you would reach and touch everyone's hearts here. Lord, yes. we thank you for Jerry and Wilma to be able here to share their ministry, oh God. And you mentioned that in your word that when we we're, you said when we we're, when I was in jail, you you visited me. When I was thirsty, you gave me water. Yes. Uh, when I was naked, you clothed me. And yeah. I just, I just want everyone to know that we are the body of Christ. Yes. And yeah. and talking about authority and opportunity, we all have yeah. different opportunities, Lord. Yes. And that opportunity in whatever we do is in giving, Lord, because yes. as we give to ministries like. Jerry and Wilma Meshler's yes, uh, ministry in Cambodia, and even the local ministries here, we are reaching souls, yeah. and we're uh, we're promoting the kingdom of God. Yeah. And so, Dancing when we do get to heaven, we are God will bless us, and He'll bless us here on earth, and He'll say, "Well done, my good and faithful servant." Yeah. So we are all whatever authority God gives us, and wherever we are, whatever. Uh, whatever we do, that may God bless us all, that we might bless each other, yes. and that ultimately the glory of God glory might reach God. Yeah. not only America, but the whole world. Amen. Amen.
in this world, make a change around the world, but you're making a change in Modesto, California, Lord. Yes, because you're the change breaker, the chain breaker, you're the world changer, Lord. You are my champion. You set the devil under our feet, Lord. Nothing can come against us because you are the King of Kings and you are the God of Triumph. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. The God of Triumph. The God of Victory. Yes. Yes, God. We love you and we love Jesus. Lord of Jesus. Love Jesus with all of your heart. Come into our heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Things that comes from above, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. 